Those were the headlines that we're tracking for you this evening. But on what's brewing today, space tech startup Ethereal X has raised $5 million in its seed round led by Yonest and saw participation from big global investments, JSC, Blue Hill Capital, Campus Fund and Golden Sparrow Ventures. The proceeds will be used to develop the engines for their fully reusable medium lift launch vehicle. Founded in 2022, Ethereal X is attempting to build reusable rockets that bring both the stages of the rocket back into Earth after flight. Joining me now to discuss this further is Manu J. Nair, the CEO of Ethereal X. Manu, thank you so much for joining us on Startup Street today. You know, like I just said, you essentially make reusable rockets. Tell us how you're doing this and the pain point that you're trying to solve through this. Also, who are you sol solving for? Who are your clients? Uh, thank you. Thank you for having us here. So uh, one of the fundamental issues that has existed for decades, uh, one of the fundamental issues that has existed for decades in the space industry uh, has been uh, with respect to the, the launch cost, right? As in, for you to get one kg into orbit today, it on average costs you about $12,500 to $16,000. Now, the fundamental idea was for us to bring that down. So when, when we talk about fully reusable launch vehicles, um, we are addressing two challenges at once, right? We are talking about one, reducing the frequency challenge, and two is to address the pricing challenges um, at a unit cost level. Now, what that essentially means is when, when, we, when we look at any launch vehicle that, that takes off the launch pad across the globe, there are certain costs associated with that launch, uh, launch vehicle, be it manufacturing, be it launch operations and whatnot. But fundamentally, who changed the whole game was uh, SpaceX, who brought in with their partial reusable, uh, partially reusable vehicle, which was the Falcon 9, where right. they lose the stage back. Uh, however, that only constitutes about 75% uh, of the launch vehicle, right? The rest of the 25% was still being dumped in the atmosphere. And the only way for us to reduce the launch price at a unit cost level was to recover the upper stage. And the reason why that has never been done before, um, and one of the key pain, pain points, like you mentioned, is the re-entry heat. Now, in the last five decades, there have been several attempts of bringing um, spacecraft that's been in orbit at higher altitudes, right? including the space shuttle. But the, the reason why it was never economically viable was the uh, issue with respect to re-entry heat. Uh, we fundamentally used um, heat shields and heat tiles to fend them off. Sure, absolutely. Uh, Manu, uh, you know you've raised this $5 million, right? So can you elaborate uh, on how you plan to spend these funds? Yeah, so uh, our idea is, uh, I mean, th these funds will be deployed towards um, uh, developing and testing of our rocket engines, the semi cryogenic reusable rocket engines. Primarily, the 40 kilonewton engine will be uh, test fired and the fin finishing up our, of our engine test facility, as well as the manufacturing of our 925 kilonewton uh, semi cryogenic reusable rocket engine. Right. And how much do your rockets, you know, your reusable rockets cost? How are you making them more affordable? And how soon will we see it in the market at this point? So uh, the vehicle is essentially, uh, the cost is something that we bear, but that's like a one-time uh, um, uh, expenditure for us. Since we're recovering the entire vehicle, most of our expenditure is only towards the propellant uh, launch way. Uh, I mean, uh, launch operations and refurbishment. So um, it's it's well under the limit. Uh, I mean, we, for the price of a small satellite vehicle, we can get eight tons into orbit. Um, however, um, uh, speaking of our first launch, we'll be looking to do that in twenty six quarter four. Um, and that will be of a technology demonstrator vehicle uh, that that will be about 35 meters tall and about um, you know 2.5 meters wide, and we can take about 1.2 tons into orbit with that vehicle. So 20. Be a... Yeah. So 2026 is when you're looking uh, when we'll be able to see this. But you know, talk to us about your revenues. What have you clocked so far, and what are the targets you've set for this year at this point? Uh, we are we are still building the vehicle. Uh, however, we've already identified and lined up over thirty five customers. Uh, in our first launch, we'll be looking to cater to around ten to fifteen of them, um, and it will be a, a fully insured launch to make sure that um, um, everything goes all right. All right, and also in the union budget this year, the finance minister announced a thousand crore rupee fund for space tech development. Right, the fund is expected to assist over 180 government recognized space technology startups in India. What do you make of this, and how encouraging is this for the sector? I think this definitely sets the right precedence, um, and we, I think, uh, 
uh, on behalf of the space community, uh, I, I think we are um, we are more than happy that this has come through. And that too, in um, in the last two and a half years since the first policy, two revisions, and now uh, a separate fund, I think this is phenomenal for the industry. Um, I think this this also adds as a, a validation point in the journey for any startup to have uh, backed that fund uh, to then go and scale further. Absolutely, and a big boost there for the space tech sector. But before we let you go, one final question: Where is the space tech industry currently at? Are we in the building phase, R and D phase, or have we, you know, collectively reached a valid business uh, to go to market stage? Also, how far is profitability since the investments are high and turnaround uh, is so long, right? Um, the space industry, I think, globally speaking, is uh, kind of uh, uh, attaining maturity. From uh, when we, if you are, if we are talking about a closed ecosystem within India, we are still in the building phase. But if you are looking at it from the point of view where we are building from India f to the world, then I think we are in a uh, in a place where we can definitely cater to most of the market. I think there are uh, several startups in different verticals that can deliver different solutions. Um, and as far as um, um, the 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 gestation period goes. I think it it really depends on case to case. Um, uh, though it is a very capital intensive industry, I think with the right uh, tech and the right business model, it's um, it's not very far off from commercialization. Not very far off from commercialization. All right, Manu, thank you so much for joining us on Startup Street, and we wish you all the best on your journey going forward. Thank you so much.